Hello, everyone. My name is Noah Coleman. I am excited to welcome you to this breakout session within the 28th annual ECHO International Agriculture Conference. You're here with myself and Dr. Unseth, Dr. Pete Unseth, and he will be discussing the promotion of innovations via proverbs and songs. Now, Dr. Unseth, by way of introduction, uh, has been serving at DIU, Dallas International University, for about the last 20 years, and his educational experience includes a PhD in linguistics from the University of Texas at Arlington and field experience ranging from working in Ethiopia in the 80s and 90s and also with Ethiopian Bible Society outside of Addis. We're very excited to have him with us and to hear his presentation on the impact of Proverbs and Songs and the opportunity that we have to be with him today is a pleasure. So would you join me in welcoming Dr. Unseth? Dr. Unseth, if you could turn on your microphone and we are glad to have you here and to learn from you. Okay, I am delighted to be here. And you know, you're looking at my, my background and you say, why is this man at an agricultural meeting? And the answer is very simple. I was invited. Okay, let's see if I can explain that a little bit more. Uh, I have always in my life had dirty fingernails. Uh, I've grown up with gardening, uh, small scale, large scale, uh, all over. So wherever my parents were, we were out there digging in the dirt. And when I moved to Ethiopia, I was still digging in the dirt. I found out that the dirt was different. The plants were different. The climate was different and all of that. So uh, if you ask me, you know, what makes my, what drives me on the inside, I'm a Bible translator, okay? But uh, today we're here to talk about plants and I like to, I like plants, plants are important. And I, uh, I look back at some of the things I did in Ethiopia and I think, yep, yeah, certain things I did with plants were probably uh, much more significant than some of the other things I did. So let me see if I can explain why I'm here. Uh, I spend a lot of time studying Proverbs, things from around the world. People in their own cultures have ways of talking about things that they want to remember, things that are important. And sometimes these uh, concepts are short little poems. So for example, in English, we say a stitch in time saves nine. We want you to remember that. It's an easy poem to remember. It's just very short, it's easy to remember. But these kinds of mnemonics around the world help us remember things. So what kinds of things are we in the agriculture world thinking of trying to help people remember? Well, or not just uh, remember, but also get used to the idea of a certain thing. So uh, we're trying to promote innovation sometimes by using these sayings, such as proverbs, songs, chants. Now, somebody's gonna ask me, well, what exactly is a proverb? And this hour, it doesn't matter what you call a proverb. It could be uh, what some people call a maxim, what some people call a saying, what some people call a jingle, whatever it is, it's some way to help people remember something. And so these are ways of encouraging people to adopt things or reminding them how to do it and those kinds of things. So whether we're talking about grafting, composting, new kinds of plants, seed collection and storage techniques, water practices, whatever, innovations require a change. So we try to work with community members to select and develop appropriate innovations. And we've all got horror stories of appropriate, I'm sorry, inappropriate innovations. So where I lived way out in the Western uh, hills of Ethiopia, there was a agricultural project that was you know, in the same building as we were. It wasn't a very big building, it was, you know, about four rooms. And they paid people to make these beds and then they gave them seeds, so they planted carrot seed and they paid them to weed it. And then they went out there to celebrate the harvest. And the people said, what do you do with this? You know, they pulled one out and said, you know, what do you do with this? The people had really not got uh, onto the idea. So the, uh, the agriculturalist team washed the carrot off and said, well, you can eat it. Well, they had not really worked with the people very much in trying to figure out what is an appropriate innovation. It would actually be a fine thing for them to learn to eat, but they need to understand why and how. They have to be sold on the innovation. 
So we want to introduce innovations that work locally. We then also want people to uh, support the innovation and get it ongoing, like those carrots that were done. I was probably never ever replicated. Okay, we did the carrots that they paid us to do. That's it, we're done. So we're often working against, and I don't mean that in a nasty way, we're working against traditional practices in a community. People are used to doing things their way. They've done it for generations. They're trying to make things work. And now we come along and we say, as a team, we've got an innovation. We have plural innovations. So how are we going to help change attitudes and practices? So for this, I have a, I have created a saying, and it is prioritize people and process over product and progress. And that's, that's uh, sort of sums up an awful lot of what I think we need to be doing in uh, introducing uh, any kind of innovation. Uh, we want to prioritize people and uh, they, are, they are more important than the fact that I have this uh, grand plan to introduce a certain plant. It's more important that uh, the people themselves are seen as important. Let's see if I can show my screen just a moment. Okay, there you can see it says prioritize people and process over product and progress. So the people, they need to make sure that we understand that we're here for you. And the process of how we introduce the change, the process of how we decide it, who is going to do it, when is, you know, all of that, the process is more important than I've got a calendar. You know, I have a budget meeting, I have to submit progress reports or something. So we are from the outside, especially if you've got a short term calendar you're working with, you want to see your particular innovation adopted and implemented quickly. So we want to see the product happen and we want to see progress happen. That's not the ultimate. We need to make sure we prioritize the people and that they feel like they've been in, included in this whole discussion. Okay, so, excuse me. <clears throat> and I just lost my document. Hang on, here it comes. While well, he's finding that document, I would just want to encourage all of the participants that you can be posting your questions into the Q&A section of the chat on the Whova app. And we will hopefully have a time of Q&A for the last 10 minutes of the session where we can interact directly with Dr. Unseth. So if you have any questions during the course of his talk, please be posting those into the Q&A section of the Whova app. Thank you, Noah. Okay. So local experts, I'm sorry, local people are experts on their context. They know, you know, at certain months, we don't get a lot of rain. Certain months, we get a lot of rain. We know that this particular uh, pest is hard on this kind of a crop. And so people have all sorts of ways of, uh, uh, they know many kinds of things and they have ways of remembering it. So I had a, uh, I have a book on, Proverbs about soil. It was a whole bunch of soil scientists that got together and from different countries, they all submitted proverbs about soil. And it was interesting, different countries, not surprisingly, had very different proverbs. There was one that was, uh, make sure that you don't plow uh, a certain kind of soil when it's wet. Certain kind of soil should only be plowed you know, when it is dry. There were other ones about, uh, don't plow this kind of soil, just do it lightly. And this is one of those things that as a proverb scholar, I would say that's not a proverb. But the people who submitted it felt like this was wisdom of our country. Yeah, so for them, it's a proverb. And there are ways of remembering which kind of soil, what do you do with it? Which kinds of plants, what do you do with it? And so how do we do these things? Well, we often have little mnemonics. It may be a, a story. It might be a poem, a chant, even a song, but cultures all have uh, lots of different mnemonics. <clears throat> so for example, there's red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky at morning, sailors take warning. It's to help you remember what to do based on the weather. Even Jesus quoted a similar weather proverb. 
yeah, it's a good way of remembering something about weather. Uh, a friend of mine used to be uh, in submarines in the United States Navy. And he said, the first thing they teach you in submarine school is righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now you say, well, that's pretty silly. That's so simple. Yes. Anything to do with a nuclear submarine, you better get it right. So they, they beat it into these guys' heads. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's a way of remembering something you're supposed to do. <clears throat> uh, there's a, a saying that's been around in agriculture. Uh, this is one from uh, 1830s. When you plant your corn, it's one for the blackbird, one for the crow, one for the cutworm, and two to grow. So you should plant five seeds in every hill. One for the blackbird, one for the crow, one for the cutworm, and two to grow. And so this was a way of remembering how many seeds you plant and why you do it. It's not just plant five seeds, but here's why. And these are ways that people can remember. Now, advertising loves to use short, memorable things. Uh, so there's an Alka-Seltzer commercial that's out now. That's an old retro commercial, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Okay, they want it to stick in your ear. They want us to remember it. Uh, and it's amazing how things are stuck in our ears. Uh, I graduated from high school about 50 years ago. And I remember there was a commercial way back then that says, you're in the Pepsi generation. I didn't, I haven't thought of that for decades. But there was something about Pepsi, the uh, stomach acid pill. And I couldn't, somehow it, it joked in my mind, you're in the Pepsi generation, you're getting to be older, okay. But things like that, they stick in the brain and they help us remember. Uh, we have a saying like 30 days has September, April, June, and November, all the rest have 31 and so on. So that's a way of remembering how many different uh, days there are in any month. If you try to remember how the order of the books in the Bible, most of us have a song. There's several different songs out there, but we can sing it in our mind as we try to remember the name of the books of the Bible. Anytime I'm trying to alphabetize something, I have to sing the alphabet song in my mind. It's there, it works. Uh, back in the days of sail, when there were sailors having to go up the rigging and adjust the, the sail of the ships, the saying was, one hand for yourself and one for the ship. So they would hang on to the ship that is, you know, hang on for themselves just to stay alive, and then they're using the other hand in a storm to tie off something. So that was it one hand for the shelf and one for the ship. Now, these kinds of things enable us to remember things a lot easier, and they remind us of things, but they can also be used to introduce new things like Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, sure. So you're in the Pepsi generation, they want you to stop drinking Coca Cola and drink Pepsi instead. So these, these are things that are used. Our biggest struggles in helping community are not always finding or identifying the most suitable plant or the composting container or a locally appropriate seed storage practice. Oftentimes the problem is not in identifying an appropriate uh, intervention, but to get people to adopt it because we've always done it this way. So why should we change? And so we try to find ways of persuading people to identify, uh, to use the new practices that a team has identified. So we want to promote it. We want to promote the techniques themselves, reminders of how to do things. And all of these people like me were outsiders. I am not the expert. I don't know why they do certain things their way. I need to work with the team. Okay, so whoever is the team, it, uh, the size of the team will vary at different times. Sometimes we have, uh, you know, a person who's with us through the whole time. Other times, uh, people that come in and out. Somebody from the Ministry of Agriculture may be involved for a short time. There might be some local leader that needs to feel like that they're involved appropriately and so on. Somebody may be from the school system. But there will be different members of the team. And I would like to challenge you to think, who could the team include? to come up with ways of promoting things in the local community. So that is we have an innovation that 
uh, the team is identified, talked with all the appropriate people. And now how do we promote it so that people actually adopt it and that, that they remember how to do it well, to do it correctly. And I think we can all think about finding somebody in the community who could come up with sayings. Now, I, I use the word proverb in the title, but it doesn't have to be that at all. But th there are ways of saying things that will remind people, this is why we do it, or this is how we do it. And those kinds of things can be really useful uh, reminders to catch on. So I remember as a little child, I was probably about seven, six years old in Japan. And there was a, uh, a saying that they put out on the radio about that one match is the cause for a fire, you know, that that's adequate. And I remember me and my friends going down the street and we were chanting it, trying to re remind everybody, you know, to be careful not to, you know, start fires. It wasn't that big a slogan. I mean, it was something about machi po moto. It's not poetic, but it's, it did stick in, in our minds because uh, it was repeated over and over again. And so we were using that. Different people have different ways of doing it. So uh, I've come up with some very corny examples. I'm having to use English because uh, that's what we have in common. And so you might try something as simple as transplant these seedlings after they develop the fourth leaf. That, that is, there's a seedling. How big does it have to be before I can transplant it? Well, maybe whatever the plant is, the fourth leaf. Uh, I, I tried this one. Avocado is a tree. Eat the tasty fruit for free. Okay, uh, where I worked in Ethiopia, out in the, in the countryside, the one thing that I did uh, introduce, I think that that stuck, was avocados. So I spent two days on the bus from the capital city with uh, two avocado seedlings between my ankles. Now you're glad to get rid of those avocado seedlings after you uh, ride with them for two days. And they really have been adopted. And the nice thing about uh, avocados in that particular part of Ethiopia is uh, because of the, the forests and the hills and all that, fields are somewhat limited. That is, you can't, there's not unlimited uh, crop space. So having an avocado tree doesn't take up any field. It's just there, you know, you can plant it in some little uh, around the house or uh, next to some uh, rock formation, some place that you couldn't really uh, make a field. And so the avocado is in some sense is for free. So you don't have to go out and do a lot of work. Uh, we could also say things like save seed from the best fruits. Okay, if you're going to do seed collection, you know, is there some way of saying it so that it is encapsulated as clearly and as briefly as possible? We're going to save the seed from the, the most appropriate one. Is that automatically from the biggest ears of corn? Yes, maybe. Depends on what you've got going. We can also talk about when to graft things. Okay, like you graft mangoes in this month, citrus in that month, and so on. But if there's some way to make that short and condensed. But that's when we want somebody who's in the culture who can wrap it in a memorable phrase to make it stick. And so, okay, my dad taught me corny high by the 4th of July. Well, that tells you back when he was learning it, because these days, with hybrid seed corn and things like that, we've got corn that's taller than your head by the 4th of July. But it's still, I still hear people say it, corn knee high by the 4th of July. And they say, oh yeah, we're way above that. Well, of course we're above that. We've got much better seeds. But it was a way of sticking in people's minds, corn knee high by the 4th of July. So it's memorable. What can we do? Who can we find as part of the team who can help us come up with sayings that would stick. We are not the ones who know the appropriate people. So if we can find local part, uh, local members of the team and say, who's good at coming up with songs or who's good with proverbs? And they may say, I can do it. Or I got my neighbor, I got my grandfather. Oh, there's this little old lady down the road. She's always coming up with things. Find the right person. And that will actually help us to, to do better at making the innovation uh, be adopted and that helping people remember how to do it. 
for example, when you plant an avocado, as I understand it, and I've done it, is I've always planted it so that the, the nose of the avocado is sticking out above the soil. So I've tried the phrase, plant so that the nose shows. Okay, you want the nose of the avocado sticking up out of the dirt. So plant so the nose shows. I had a uh, young man in Ethiopia that was working with us and uh, for lunch, we were having avocados. And he says, oh, so this is what an avocado is. He had been to the agricultural school and he, for uh, about three weeks, he'd studied among other things, avocados. And they told him all about avocados. He never got to see one, never got to eat one. But he says, oh yeah, see, when you big seed, like an egg, when you plant it in the ground, you leave it sticking out. Exactly, he remembered all of that, but didn't know what it tasted like. Okay, so plant so the nose shows, that would be some way of remembering it. Another way of uh, doing things is uh, by local riddles. Now, when I say riddle, in English, we have this really odd thing. I know it sounds funny to, to you. Our riddles all end with a question mark. Lots of places in the world, the riddle is not a question, it's a sentence, a, a declarative sentence. Then you have to figure out how it works. So uh, an Ethiopian friend of mine has produced a whole book of Amharic riddles from Ethiopia. And so I thought about, and I sent him one because uh, in Ethiopia, they don't uh, have fluorescent tubes for so many people. It's you know a, a light bulb and when it turns black, it's no good. So my riddle was, when this light bulb is black, that's when it's best. And the answer is an avocado. The avocado, you have to wait until the whole outside of it turns black. That's when it's good. Because you know, some people are gonna say, oh, maybe I should cut it now, I should harvest it now. But you, you wait till it's black and a little bit soft. So a riddle from their point of view, the light bulb is best when black. There are all other kinds of ways of doing uh, things, whether it's sung as a song, whether it is done as a, as a brief little poem, however it's done, my point is to try to get some oral means, wrapping up some little slogan, if you will, a jingle, an ad, something that people can uh, say and listen to, repeat, it'll be in their mind, echoing in the back of their brain, to try to introduce things and then to try to uh, how to implement it with the various techniques that is you know, how do you, when do you plant it how do you plant it what seed do you collect all of those kinds of things and that way we're helping the people to be able to remember things in a way that they're used to now you may say well i've got all of that information on this piece of paper right here yeah you do and some people will actually be very happy for that piece of paper but there's still a lot to be said for people remembering things and being able to easily recall it. So when they're doing it or if they're thinking about it, they've got that. So that's, in a nutshell, that's what I'm trying to get people to do is say, hey, we've got innovations and we work really hard with the team to select an innovation. And how do we get the community to buy into it and then to do it well? whether it's trying to remember uh, when to plow a certain kind of soil, which I already gave you that one from, was from India. Uh, there's others about picking rocks. Well, yeah, that's, that's traditional agriculture. We're trying to talk about bringing in innovations and innovations are always disruptive. Okay, that's my main spiel. And uh, I see a couple of familiar names out there. Hello, Yoders. But uh, that's, that's my uh, presentation. I would love to hear examples of things that you have heard in local countries, uh, wherever you're working. And uh, I'd love to, to be able to, to add real examples to what I've thought of. Thank you, Dr. Anset, for the presentation. That was very, very interesting. Um, the best way to have questions be able to come up in this conversation is actually to post those in the Q&A session of the Whova app. So if you can be typing those questions even now, we do have a question already in the Q&A side of the app. And so I'll read that for you now, Dr. Unseth. 
And the question is, when is a proverb too long? What is a good limit to how many words it should be at most? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I say it's a great question because there isn't, a, there isn't an obvious answer. But you want it to be as short and sweet as possible. That is, it's sort of more like an ice pick than a hammer. You want it you know, very precise. It will not always be grammatical. That is, we, okay, we say a stitch in time saves nine. That doesn't really fit English grammar. But whatever sayings you use, make sure that it is acceptable and uh, appreciated by local standards, not whether we think it's uh, too long or too short. Uh, sometimes it might just be, uh, so we say three words that uh, are just say three nouns and it's just something to, to, to remember. But whatever it is, it's got to be by local standards. Okay, we're big into rhyme for poetry. Other parts of the world really like alliteration or they like parallel. So whatever it is, we're trying to make sure that local people value this, this saying and say, ah, that's good. I will remember it. That's, that's what we're trying to do. There's one example that is written in the Q&A session that says, haraka, 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 sorry, haraka, haraka, haina, baraka which is the Kiswahili equivalent of haste makes waste. Yeah, it's like hurry, hurry has no blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't speak Swahili. I know that one proverb, okay? Uh, so that's, okay, here, <clears throat> this is another example of something that I've seen done in places. You take an existing proverb that was actually meant for a fairly general purpose, and then you take it and apply it more narrowly to a specific situation to, yeah, yeah. That's a, it's always a good principle, you know, that. Uh, hurry, hurry has no blessing. But you know, make sure that you know when you uh, transplant this thing that you know you uh, give it time. Uh, realize you know you're not going to be able to uh, uh, do something with it quickly. Okay, let me give you another example of an innovation. For example, like some people take a two-liter bottle, they poke a hole in it, they plant it, uh, they bury it next to a ceiling, and then they pour water in it so that this will just you know slowly, slowly drip that. Could somebody come up with a way of saying, uh, you know, slowly, slowly has a blessing in Swahili. I, you, know, you understand, sometimes you take an existing proverb and you apply it. Sometimes you take an existing saying, you twist it just a little bit. It'll still stick in people's minds. Yeah. Dr. Anseth, can you think of any songs uh, you mentioned in your title, Proverbs and Songs? Are there particular songs that you have found memorable? Um, or helpful in well, agricultural settings? Yeah, let me just see if I can. Uh, I was sort of given a deadline, quick, give us a title. So I gave it to him. Then uh, I lost it, so I didn't produce anything on songs. Uh, I will think of one. Thank you for making me uncomfortable. No, that I, I should have had one. Like I say, I, I lost the title and I was working on this. I worked on the topic, forgetting that that ex specific word was in the title. Sure. Uh, Another thing that I'm curious about personally is, as you mentioned, um, finding local people who can help you pull aside that grandmother from down the street who's good at developing these memorable mnemonics. Um, has that seemed to be the best way to adapt and develop these mnemonics and devices, these poems, these songs, and other contexts is to find local people who can then find the people that will help you to be able to make sure that that information is transmitted effectively through that mnemonic. Yeah, that is, we're outsiders. So culturally and uh, linguistically, we are just not as rooted as people are. And working with whoever we have in our team, and I say team in a very vague sense because there will at times be a very small team, other times the team will be larger. There will be people who say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should go talk to so-and-so. I think that they're always good at this kind of thing. Maybe it's a person who is known as a good performer, or maybe it's somebody who does compose songs, or maybe it's just somebody who always seems to be able to come up with a good idea. But we need to, we need to milk our networks. We've got to have uh, the local people's idea of who's good, not, not just our idea of who's good, because uh, they'll know better. And sometimes lightning strikes, and some local guys say, hey, I got it, I got it. Yeah. 
The As lightning reminder, is more like go ahead. The lightning is more likely to strike them than it is likely to strike us. Yeah. To all those participating, feel free to pose any questions in the Q&A section of the Whova app. Um, one more thing that I was curious about is along the lines of the adoption of these interventions. I remember working with some FFF Foundations for Farming or Farming God's Way trainers and then using the example of God's blanket to represent mulch. Um, and then they would refer to God's blanket in subsequent trials or subsequent trainings for people to remember without saying the word mulch or communicating the same thing. Is that is that related to what we're talking about here? Yeah, it is. And it's, uh, I mean, the word mulch is definitely a new concept. So by tying it into something really positive, yeah, that helps, helps it stick. And uh, I give them two points for having come up with that term. So obviously they're gonna have to test it with local people and if, if it flies, great. The point is we're trying to make things easy to remember. So don't give them, you know, one of these high tech kinds of, uh, let's see, you know, nitrogen fixing uh, legumes. You know, let's not talk about nitrogen fixing legumes. You know, we've got to have a better term than that. It needs to be something that will stick in people's minds. What does the what does the testing process look like for seeing if the proverb, the song, the maxim is effective? Oh, I love it. I'm good. You sound like a Bible translator. The testing process, yes. So somebody comes up with an idea and they say, man, I know this will work. This is great. I know everybody will love it. Well, maybe, maybe not. So you bounce it off of you know whoever's in your team. And if the, the team obviously, you know, they account for something. And then uh, probably have them bounce it off of their friends and family. But you don't want to make this a an argument like this person came up with the term, so we like him, so we have to use his term. You don't want it to become that, but we we do want to make sure that whatever we've got going, that that we do test it. It's not just you know I think it's a good idea, but local people that we talk with they think it's a good idea. And it's got to be uh, more than just one or two people. But inevitably, I mean, people won't all immediately adopt it, but you will want to find ways of propagating it, hmm. like with a plant. Yeah. There's a question in from Patrick Brady that reads as follows. In Kazakhstan, we added a hand sign to accompany each principle to help with memory. Can you comment on using an action or hand sign? Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, absolutely. Uh, I would love to know, Patrick, does the hand sign directly mimic uh, the, or does it symbolize an action? That is, so if you're uh, planting, do you push down or something? Yeah. It's just like uh, those action songs that you sang as a kid. Yeah, Father Abraham, you've got your hand motions. It helps you remember the song. Anything uh, to help you do it. Uh, yeah, I remember once something about uh, how to do a, how to plant something. Yeah, there were three three hand motions, or the last was a foot motion about uh, tamping the soil. Yeah, I, I totally forgotten that. Yeah, but anything, anything that we can get to help people remember and adopt uh, appropriate new technologies and innovations. Yeah, we want to help do it because it's not enough that we have sat there at our desk with our laptop and we have come up with a really brilliant idea. We've got to propagate it get people to adopt it, and then they have to learn how to do it right. Because sometimes if you do an, adopt, uh, an innovation wrong, it backfires. Patrick did write back and say, yes, it does in terms of, does it mimic as you were asking? And he says, we used it for the 10 commandments of pruning for fruit trees, which is interesting. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can put those in the Q&A section of the Whova application. We have time for just a few more questions. One question that I have also in the moment, Dr. Unseth, is to what to what end do you find repetition being a major source of your ability to promote these maxims in, in the sense of how how does repetition play into the the transmission of this information and then I guess further um, 
how long does it take to see effects of these come about? Could you give examples? I can't give you any kind of a rule of thumb, uh, but I do know that some things, they just seem to catch fire instantly. Other things, boy, they, you know, you keep thinking, man, we've got a winner here. So the local team is going to uh, be the judges here as to what should they even try. And they're also going to be the people who will decide, yes, it's working or no, it's not. And you know, sometimes you just have to get off the dead horse and say, well, we tried, it was an experiment, find some other way to promote it. Uh, Patrick Brady mentioned 10 commandments of pruning fruit trees. I just remember now, as soon as he said that, my father-in-law's had a lot of fruit trees and he said, you have to prune it so that a wild goose could fly through the tree. Okay, I thought that was a really bizarre image, but it stuck in my mind. I could actually imagine it. So mm. did I actually prune his trees for him quite that drastically? No, but it was pretty clear he wanted them pruned pretty drastically. And so it was, a, it was an image that just absolutely stuck in my mind. You know, I, that was what? 25 years ago, but it's still stuck. That that's how he wanted fruit, fruit trees pruned. Uh, in lieu of another question being asked, I guess I'll bring back up my former question about songs since you've had a moment to think about any songs that might have come to mind in the last few minutes. Uh, if not, I do have one more that just came in. He says, when they asked how tall the fruit tree should be, we said, prune it so that you can reach the fruit. So the quotation is around prune it so that you can reach the fruit. There you go. And it's, it's you know, I mean, I don't know what language that was. And, you know, I don't know what it should sound. Was that from, uh, from Patrick Brady? But from where, Patrick Brady. Yeah. So whatever part of the world, hey, you know, if that's the size of the, the trees you've got, uh, somebody needs to come up with a saying, never climb a mango tree. And there's been far too many people injured that way, but uh, you know, uh, there's got to be ways of finding words, good phrases to help encourage the adoption of an innovation, but then also to remember the, the different steps. So the, the different uh, steps of uh, the rules, <clears throat> the rules for pruning fruit trees. Yeah, that's good. But there's then other things like, you know, if you're collecting seed and storing it, you have to, I presume, throw out anything that already looks like it's been eaten by a bug or might have a bug in it. Get rid of that. Uh, those are important steps. And so there might be a chant, a song, something that'll help you remember that. And I love the hand motions idea. We are just about out of time. I wanted to, first of all, thank you again, Dr. Unset, for your helpful and, and very interesting uh, talk, your session. If you have any further questions for Dr. Unset, you can feel free to connect with him through the Whova app. And there are a wealth of proverbs and songs that I hope you will find helpful as you think about what might work for you in your area. But thank you again, Dr. Unset, for your time. It's been fun. Anybody who wants to let me talk about proverbs, I'm happy to anytime. God bless y'all. <laughs>